I think many people are puzzled, perhaps even distressed, by the presence of suffering within nature. I think there are many people who look at this messy world full of suffering and death and say, look, how on earth can God use things like suffering and death to bring about something that we believe to be good? I mean, if we believe in evolution, I mean, think of how how long the process of suffering and death is to bring us to this point. I think what we have to say really is we don't fully understand this. And I think that I'm very suspicious of slick and simple answers. There's some fundamental human instinct which makes us say, look, surely it could be better than this. Surely we don't have to suffer. But actually, we don't know that at all. I think that this innate suspicion that there has to be a better world is actually very significant because where does it come from? It's, it's in effect saying we have this deep moral sense that something is wrong with this. It's almost as if we anticipate there is a better world in which there won't be suffering. We'd like to see it now, but maybe one day we will. And you can see how that maps on to a Christian vision of things, which actually is all about the hope of a transformed future, a world in which there'll be no pain, no suffering. It doesn't resolve things now, but I think it does make a connection with something else, which is a very important part of the Christian way of thinking. Number one, this is not what God intended for his creation, and it's something that is going to be changed. There is this vision of a future hope in which we live in a world where there is no suffering anymore. And secondly, I think much more importantly, we are dealing with a God who, according to the Christian faith, entered into this world through suffering in Christ and redeemed us through suffering. In other words, look, if there is suffering in the world, I take this burden on my shoulders and I offer to transform it. One day this will be gone and you will be with me where this is no longer. And then a very important point. Because we know what the new Jerusalem is going to be like, we do ask this question. Is there anything we can do now to make this world more like what we believe the new Jerusalem will be? Can we alleviate suffering? Can we help people? Can we do something to alleviate suffering of animals? So the new Jerusalem, paradoxically, informs our thinking and our acting right here and now.